Let me show you how to turn a photo into a painting. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer. Let's get started. I stumbled upon this process by accident playing around with Affinity Photo. So in this tutorial, I'm not only showing you how that process works, but how I come up with these ideas. And of course, this effect works a lot better when you have a photo that looks already like a painting from the style. I want to copy the layer with that photo. Right click on that and duplicate Duplicate. Here is how I stumbled about this technique. I went to filters, blur, and now we have the median blur. Other than the Gaussian blur, this keeps the shape, but it blurs inside of the shape. And this means I get a lot more abstraction in there. And you can already see it kind of looks like a painting if I do that. Let's go with a little bit of medium blur. Let's apply this. Then I'm going to duplicate the original photo again, put that on top. And you can see now we have the full details again. And I go back to filter, blur, medium blur. And now I blur it more so I get more abstract shapes and I can combine them afterwards. So let's do this here. And now I will go to the blend mode, soft light to blend these two together. And you can see well, we have a little bit more intense colors, but also a mix of smaller and bigger details at the same time. When you think about a painting, what else does it have? It has a bit more strokes. It has a paint way that the light flows. And of course, it has a linen structure. If you love creative videos like this, check out my double exposure video or my seamless pattern design video for Affinity Photo. So we are going to make another copy of our original photo. Right click and duplicate like this. I put it on top again. Now what we could do is we go to filter, detect and detect edges. But right now the photo has too many details because an artist wouldn't make these very fine details unless it is hyper realistic painting. He would do a little bit rougher detail. So we want to go first to Gaussian blur and then blur this a little bit like so. So you see that you still see fine details, but they are not exactly there 100%. Now we go to filter, detect and detect edges. And you can see now that we have these wider edges, but the lines that we want to use are bright right now. We are going to layer invert. So with that, we can try to blend this with what we already have. I suggest to you, if you want to be experimental, if you want to try out different techniques, find new styles inside of Affinity Photo. For example, this could be cool if you want to. Today, I'm going to use Linear Burn. You can see already pretty good. We're getting back some details here, but it is a little bit too much. So what we need to do here is to reduce the effect we have in the brighter parts of the image. There's a very easy way to do that. We go here to the little cogwheel and we have our blend ranges. Now, this is the source layer, which is the layer that we have selected right now. And the left side is dark, the right side is bright. So we want to reduce the effect of the bright part. So you can see when I move this down and I move this over, less and less of these strokes are visible. And even here for the dark strokes, you could pull this down to make them less bright, to make them less intense. You can also, by the way, go in here, click and make extra points to move this around more if you want to adjust it finer. And down here, you can unhook linear to even turn this into a curve. So there's a lot of possibility in here. Now we have already achieved a lot in our image, but what is one thing that differentiates the expression of an artist from a photo. Photo is physical light, but the artist uses his imagination to create the expression for the light. So that means the next step would be that we create a pixel layer down here. 
we set it to soft light and do a little bit of dodge and burn here. And then we want to open up the color here. I have my color wheel selected, as you know, this is my favorite way to select colors. Everything that is darker than the medium gray, this is making the image darker. And everything that is brighter than the medium gray is making the image brighter. So with that, I can go in here and you can see when I go like this, I already get kind of an effect. It's pretty good. Actually, you know what? This is not a great brush here. Let's try this one. Yeah, that already looks better. And so you can see I'm just making some strokes here and I'm using Control and Alt and then clicking and moving my mouse to resize my brush quickly so I can go over the image and everywhere where I think I want to have a little bit more darkness in my image, I'm making a stroke and I'm also being a little bit clumsy at the same time. So this isn't 100% perfect. Uh, it is more like a little bit of a brush stroke kind of feel to it, even though you don't see any brush strokes. But you can, I can tell that this light isn't 100% natural. And also sometimes, as you can see, when I stroke around here, we can see a little bit of strokes that are happening. So there is some stuff going on that is not like it would be in a photo, right? So that's already pretty helpful here. Let's go down here. We even have some more parts down here as a pretty big picture. So now I'm in the brighter area and we are going to do the same thing. Going here over some areas, being a little bit clumsy at the same time so that we add a little bit of brighter parts here. That is not good. Let's go here a little bit darker because in the face that seems like a little bit too much. Let's go like this. Yeah, that's that's nice. Maybe a little bit brighter so we see a bit more of that. There we go. So it has kind of that brush stroke feel. Let's do this also down here. See here on the neck we can get a little bit more brush stroke feel. Put some in here on this fashion part here. And then we can also go down here, put some brightness here, maybe here. And then down there. And when I'm finished with that, I will show you the before and after. And you're going to see it's going to be pretty interesting how that is different. Oh, there we have the earring. I want to make this a little bit brighter so we see it better. And maybe also here, that part. There we go. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, let's close this real quick. And you can see now, if I turn this on and off, that this actually gives it more structure that makes it look a little bit more like a painting, right? So that's already pretty good. Now, like I said, I want to make this a little bit brighter. Everything looks a little bit dark here. So I think with the soft light, I will blend this a little bit softer like so. We can also reduce this a little bit like so. And now we have a bit more brightness in here. Let's look at this. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's come to the next step. This is the linen. Now the linen, I also have linked a photo of linen in the video description. And what we are going to do here is we need this bigger, but we also need it kind of seamless. So what I'm going to do here is I have already opened the file. I go to document resize canvas, and then I simply go in here and say times two like so, and then resize. So now the canvas is four times as big. I go over here, unlock this background layer, and I make copies and I will turn this upside down and then move this over here and move it over here and then turn this upside down like so. So it's not always the same. Now you can see we have edges here, so that's not ideal. I'm going to use my clone brush. We also have to set this to current layer and be low or actually layers beneath is good here. Alt click and then go to the right and click again. And you can see here I have the hardness very soft. Let's make it even softer on zero. And then we simply paint here over that edge. Now I'm going to source from here and simply go up and then we are going to paint like this. And there is a little bit that we need to fix. And that already looks pretty good. There's a part that I don't like so much. Let's go like this. And there we go. Now I'm going to right click on the upper layer and say 
merge visible. So this is creating a new layer out of everything. And then control C to copy, go over to our other image control V like Venus to copy this in here. This is too big, of course. And this is also why we did that, that we combined it four times. So we have a finer pattern for our linen. There's a little bit of blur here, but again, we're going to plant this with the background image. So that doesn't matter too much. Now I'm going to go here and set this to soft light. And you can see now I have a beautiful effect here for our linen on the painting. And this, of course, makes our image look a lot more like a painting. Right now it has become a lot brighter. So I'm going to go in here and bring back a little bit of these details here that we reduced before. So this is starting to look pretty good. And now we are going to do an adjustment for brightness and contrast. Bring in a little bit more contrast, reduce the brightness maybe a bit. And then also I want to do a color balance and make this a little bit different from the colors to make it look even more like a painting. Also, thank you to my Patreon supporters who will get this file with all of the layers. My YouTube members, thank you for supporting me and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Bye.